So I'm thinking, uh, let's uh, get started. The, the rest as they come in, I will just uh, admit them. Uh, OK. OK, thanks. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Kristan. Welcome to Cloak Webinar. This session will be recorded. So recently, quite a few friends have been concerned about Zoom security for work from home session. So we hope to provide some answer to this question. Is Zoom evil or good? So first, a little background about myself. I founded data uh, security company Cloak in 2011 to provide simple password-free file encryption. With cloud services and mobile applications, our data lives on different platforms. And we feel that a good, we feel that a good SDK and file encryption tool can help secure your information in this new age. Prior to Cloak, I have more than 10 years experience working in software development, project management, corporate finance, and startup investment. The work brought me to different cities in UK, uh, USA, China, and Singapore, where I met some of you. So this slide shows how we will approach today's session. KT will take eight minutes to share background knowledge about Zoom. She will also cover Zoom ease of use and pricing relative to its competitors. I will then speak about security of popular web meetings tools for 10 minutes. We will end our session with a 15 minutes Q&A. Uh, Katie will now take over the session. So, uh, okay, yeah. Thank you, Marka. So, uh, hi, my name is Katie, and I'm currently a marketing intern at Cloak. So, I'm here to just give you a better background knowledge on Zoom, and I hope you'll leave with some interesting takeaways. I'll be covering topics such as how Zoom was founded, Zoom's growth, and comparison of Zoom with its competitors. So as you all know, Zoom is the most popular web conference tool in the market right now, and it's not other than the brainchild of Eric Yuan, who is the founder of Zoom. And originally from China, he left his six-figure job as the vice president of engineering in Cisco WebEx as he was frustrated that Cisco's management wouldn't address the issue of an outdated web conference tool. So in Yuan's opinion, Cisco's web conference tool did not evolve quickly enough to catch up with customers' expectations on convenience and ease of use. So you can tell that this guy has a lot of passion and experience in building conference tools. He firmly believed that he could develop a platform that would bring about the best user experience in order to make his customers happy. So please do bear in mind that it was a huge risk, as the market for web conference tools were already saturated then. So over 40 WebEx engineers joined his venture. They had insights that the web conference market is larger than what the existing players thought, and sought to bring what they envisioned for Zoom into a reality. So efforts paid off. In the nine years since Zoom was founded, the company managed to double its revenue in 2019 to more than 620 million. And due to the pandemic in 2020, so it caused a sudden influx of users, and the company's stock has more than doubled, giving Zoom a market valuation of around 42 billion. So take a look at the slide. We compare across three players, Zoom, Google Meet, and Microsoft Teams. You can see the increase in daily active users highlighted in yellow. Market size has increased, but Zoom captures most of the market share, increasing by about 20 times of its original size since 2019, while Google Meet increased by only about five times, and for Microsoft, four. So it's really no surprise that Zoom remains ahead of its competitors. Zoom eliminates the premise that important business calls only happen in the boardroom. Like how Skype and Skype business are two different apps, Zoom markets itself as very flexible, used anytime for any occasions. Whether it's a short catch-up session, education, or business meeting, it comes through. So this is especially critical in contributing to their success as they captured the social market that competitors felt to capitalize on during a pandemic. Also, another reason why Zoom gained users so quickly was because it really was a simpler and more convenient tool to use back in 2019 compared to other players. 
It was first to deliver quirky features such as filters, virtual backgrounds. Also, it's super easy to join a meeting, as you all know, just by using a link. So this year, all major competitors have caught up with Zoom, but the perception that Zoom is easier to use persisted. So you can take a look at the table below. It compares the ease of use among a few main conference tools as of this year. So as you can see, there's not much difference in the number of clicks it takes to join the meeting, password and account requirement, as well as ease of screen sharing. So the table, there's another table here. It compares the pricing. P stands for participants. So it is clear that Zoom differentiates mainly through pricing. They were the most generous in 2019 to its free users with a total of 40 minute time limit for 100 participants. They distinguished themselves as a cheaper option before COVID and achieved further viral adoption during COVID as people such as telemarketers use them in large 100 people web conferences. So this year, the major competitors caught up in terms of pricing increased number of participants and telling it for their free users. So effectively, Zoom started a price war in this market and eroded future profitability. But the thing is, Zoom shares still trade at a high point. So they thus have to justify their value somewhere, such as true data collection, which Marcus will share more about later. So in summary, from service to pricing, there is no doubt that Zoom had benefited millions. Zoom generously provided a platform for people in lockdown to socialize for free and market itself as convenient, easy to use, and with added features that conventional platforms used to not have. It's the little things that upgrade user experience that contributed to its growth. But is this good at the expense of your privacy and cybersecurity? So Marcus will not elaborate on the trade off Zoom made. Uh, Marcus, please. So uh, thanks, Katie. Uh, Zoom is a listed company, so it has financial obligation to its shareholders. We have seen how expensive it is to run a web meeting company at scale. It costs more than a few million dollars a day. And it is unfair to assume Zoom can provide free meetings forever. Most premium web services companies have a business model based on advertising or data. Zoom can get immediate data, immediate value from free users data through product upselling or subscription conversion. It can also resell your data to third party partners. In the future, it can cross sell future products to free tier users and use data analytics for accurate online advertising. In addition, Zoom has benefited from its share price. Their PE ratio is more than 1,600. And the CEO Eric Nguyen made more than $4 billion from his shares early this year. However, as it is, Zoom is a pure web meeting company with no alternative products or advertising engine compared to his uh, major competitors. So it needs to understand the free tier user as much as possible to justify its share valuation. For this business reason, large scale freemium solution cannot offer true end-to-end -end encryption. They also need to make it easy for new user to join without password or account. The services also encourage social features to make the solution more popular. A social platform is seldom good for security as, to, as the users will be more likely to click on the link from a stranger or an online friend. So we also look through Zoom's privacy statement. It is actually quite well crafted and lists the information that they record and who they share them to. So Zoom claims that they do not record or store your actual meeting, but they do store your personal information and share them to their marketing partners. Another interesting insight is that it removed a new attention tracking feature. Uh, just recently in April 5th, uh, probably due to backlash from media. So this slide compares Zoom's security features to its competitors. The Y-axis lists the security features, uh, accesses the competitor. So one interesting observation is that all major competitors have relaxed their security requirements to match Zoom's ease of use. 
So uh, the WebEx, the leader in the enterprise segment, continues to offer the most secure solution. Zoom is still the easiest to use as it has reached the widest adoption and most of us already have a Zoom app installed and configured on our laptop or mobile phone. Next, we can look into one widely publicized Zoom security loophole. Uh, it was first reported by underscore God Mode on 24th March this year. One week later, Mohammed Bassett demoed an exploit based on it. This is a classic well-known exploit that is severe in outcome as attackers can gain access to your Windows system. The very next day, on 2nd April, Zoom fixed the loophole through a patch. But the user have to install or update their Zoom app to have the patch. So if you have been using Zoom on your work laptop, you might already have been compromised with malware, which, will, which may make your laptop a jump point into your work organization. To sum up, Zoom gained a lot of attention for bad security as its reported bugs are simple to exploit, yet potentially very damaging. The fact that they are former Cisco WebEx top engineers and industry watchers can't help to speculate that there are deeper reasons behind the, uh, the hacks and the loopholes. So your data is valuable in this data-focused web business model world. But we categorize the data into text, images, video and real time. Zoom potentially is the next data platform to collect real time text, images and video information. We feel this is the reason why its valuation is so high now. The investors believe that they can pull it off. There is no doubt that to most users, Zoom represents good. The goodwill that Zoom accumulated by allowing all of us to connect virtually for free during the pandemic is real and appreciated by many. However, if you are doing a web meeting for work, you might want to configure the security settings for your Zoom session or use the recommended meeting tools provided by your IT administrators. So uh, the, this seminar's content is also in our work from home data protection guide, which covers additional areas of concern, such as VPN and cloud storage. We will email the guide to you after the webinar. You can also try out our cloak uh, security product. Uh, it does for encryption uh, easily at cloakapps.com. So we appreciate your support. I would like to thank you for your time and we are happy to answer any question that you may have.